In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to record and live stream your PW513 webcam in 1080p, all of the settings you need to know really quick. Before we get started, I want to make sure that you already have your camera mounted, you already have your camera plugged in, you already have the firmware updated, the drivers updated, and the cam engine software installed. You got all that done, right? If not, you know where to click to check out the tutorial video where I explained all of that, okay? Awesome, so now that all of that is done, and if you already own the camera, which you do, if you do not already own the camera, pick it up, you know where to click to pick it up. It is my favorite webcam on the market, 4K with a 94 degree angle lens. You'll see how amazing it is in this tutorial. What you're gonna do is go to the settings area in OBS first to add the camera to OBS. This is open broadcaster software, the best free software to broadcast on the internet. Click settings. Then you're gonna to go to the video tab over here on the side, and that's where you're going to adjust the resolution to record and stream in 1080p. Click video. Then you're going to want to adjust your settings up here with your base can canvas resolution, as well as your output scaled resolution to 1920 by 1080. Go ahead and select that for both of those settings. Then for your downscale filter, you can decide how powerful your computer is. You wanna bump this up to 32 samples if you can. If you have a fast processor, if you have an older processor, keep that at 16 samples. And for your frame rate, I recommend bumping this up to 60 frames per second if you have a fast computer, and if you have a good graphics card, if you have a slow graphics card and a slow computer, try 30 frames per second. So I'm gonna bump this up to 60 because my computer is insane. Awesome. Your next stop here in your settings is going to be the output tab. Now this is going to default to simple mode. Simple mode does not give you the settings you need. So you wanna go ahead and do this to advanced mode. And this is gonna open up a whole new world of settings for you in terms of streaming and recording. Now your first stop here in the advanced streaming settings is selecting your encoder. And as you can see, I've got two encoder options listed here. NVIDIA NVENC H264 and X264. What's the difference between these? I very, very highly recommend that you guys pick up an NVIDIA graphics card if you're a content creator of any description. It is necessary, in my opinion, to maximize your quality and to ensure that you don't get encoding overload, dropped frames, and stuttery performance on your computer. I recommend picking one up right now. You guys know where to click to check out my Amazon page if you're not already following it. Go ahead and follow me on Amazon. I've got all of my gear recommendations here, including the best cameras and the best computers that you can use. And all of the computers on my Amazon page featured are pre-built computers with NVIDIA 30 series graphics cards built in. I own two of these that I run in my studio. And what these graphics cards allow you to do when you're using a camera like this, you're broadcasting, is you take all of the processing load off of your processor on your computer and it puts it instead on the graphics card. This is what you need if you wanna be a professional broadcaster, okay? So when you have that NVIDIA graphics card, you can use NVIDIA's NVENC encoder, which maximizes your quality. Then under rate control, you'll have the option of CBR, VBR, and other settings. I recommend CBR, which is constant bit rate. What does that mean? That means you will have a consistent quality throughout your stream. Now for streaming settings on 60 frames per second, you can go between 4,500 here for your bit rate up to 9,000 for your bit rate. And if you're doing 30 frames per second, you can go between 3,000 and 6,000. A good middle of the road setting, general setting for all of you is to do 36,000 as your bit rate, okay? 6,000 is your bit rate. That's a good middle of the road setting across the board. In terms of your quality, I recommend starting on performance and then working your quality up from there. You wanna be able to try to do max quality for your preset, but I recommend starting on performance and working your way up the list from there, depending on your computer's capabilities. Performance, then quality, then max quality, and test your streams and make sure your computer can handle it. Do not enable look ahead, but feel free to leave psycho visual tuning enabled. Great, go ahead and click apply right here, but do not yet hit okay because we have more settings to do. Great. Under the recording tab, what you're going to do is you're going to select a recording path of wherever you want to drop your videos. Click the browse button right up here and pick 
hopefully a storage folder. If you have a storage folder or a storage drive on your computer, for example, I've got this D drive right here. So I could create a new folder here if I wanted to, and I could call it, and I recommend you do this, OBS, okay? Drop it in a storage drive or a folder you know where they're going to be. For your recording format, I recommend MP4 because MP4 files are the most compatible. You can drop it to any editor on planet Earth and they'll be able to use them. And for your encoder, I recommend using a different encoder than your stream if you have one of those powerful computers I'm recommending or a powerful computer. And use the NVIDIA encoder if you can. If not, use X264. And what you're going to do is you're going to set higher quality settings here than you would have done for your stream. So you're going to do your constant bitrate, CBR, but your quality here in terms of your bitrate, you can bump that number up higher than you would have done for your stream. And so for 30 frames per second, you want to you want your bitrate to be about 10,000. And for 60 frames per second, you want your bitrate to be up to about 15,000, depending on the platform. So I use 15,000 as a good middle of the road number here in terms of your bitrate. In terms of your preset, start on quality and then see if your computer can handle max quality. Profile high, look ahead off, psycho visual tuning on, then hit apply, but do not yet hit okay because we have another setting that's critically important in the audio tab over here. Your bitrate in terms of audio will default to 160. If you can, go ahead and bump this up to 320. Double your audio quality for free. You're welcome. You're absolutely welcome for that. Seriously, 320 is like a high quality MP3 and 160 is like a mid-tier MP3. Why not bump the quality up? YouTube likes it when you do that. You can hit apply and now you have my permission to hit okay. Really quick though, you're gonna to need to obviously select your streaming platform you're going to stream to. You need to go through that process separately. There's a million streaming platforms. You'll have to connect your streaming platform here and go through the connection process on how to stream with this camera, okay? Cool. Now let's add the camera. You're gonna hit the plus button over here under sources and that plus button will enable you to add the Avery Media camera to the template here. Hit video capture device, that's what this is and I like to call mine the PW513. Now hit OK. Once you do that, it'll pull up the camera, unprocessed right here, and it'll drop down in your list of potential options as the Cam513. You will also see the Cam513 Cam Engine 1. What is the difference between these two options? So the Cam513 um, Engine 1 is the processed version of your video. What do I mean by that? Your Cam Engine software enhances your video, crops it, and makes it look better. So do the Cam Engine 1 version of your video. I did an entire tutorial video that's right here on the channel all about that, okay? Awesome, that's why I did that video first. Then under Default, Resolution FPS Type, select Custom, and choose the resolution of 1920 by 1080. That's what you're looking to do here today. We're doing 1920 by 1080. Then, for whatever your frame rate is, you can have it match the output frame rate. Depending on if you chose 30 frames per second or 60, the camera will now match whatever setting you did earlier. Got it? That's why we did it in this order, is so it would match up when everything drops here. And boom, now you have your beautiful Aver Media PW513 footage in your software, ready to stream and ready to record. But wait, there's more. You probably don't want to use the built-in microphone on this thing. <laughs> uh, it's okay for a webcam mic, but it's not great. So what you're going to do is you're going to mute the microphone for this camera right here by clicking the mute button. Hit the gear cog and do hide, and it will hide the actual uh, uh, source here in your software. And you're going to want to add a good microphone. Now, what's a good microphone for this? Well, the microphone I recommend using, it's the one I use right now, it's the Shure MV7. It's the best sounding USB microphone I've ever used. The Shure MV7 is modeled after the Shure SM7B, the one you've seen every major streamer on planet Earth use. You know where to click to pick this up if you wanna get it. We're gonna add that microphone today. And I'm gonna show you a final step after we do that. All of this is required to have a good setup. Got it? Hit the plus button down here under sources and then hit audio input capture to add your mic, whatever your mic is, okay? I'm gonna type it in as mic. 
go ahead and select the device. For me, it's gonna be the Shure MV7. Hit OK. Awesome, as you can see, my levels are now popping here under levels whenever I talk into this mic, which means it's working. But your audio and your video may not be synced up properly. So how do you fix that? Your video usually moves slower than your audio. So you can slow down your audio to sync up with your video by clicking the gear cog next to your microphone. That's why I'm going through this. Go to advanced audio properties in that menu and it'll pop up this menu right here. As you can see, there are some settings here for all of your audio devices. And the one we're gonna look at today is called Sync Offset. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in a number on your microphone and that's gonna slow your microphone down so it goes as slow as your video. Got it? So generally speaking, go ahead and start at 100 MS. It's a good starting point setting. You can start at 100 MS. You can go up to 225 MS to figure out how fast or slow your microphone needs to be to be perfectly in sync with your video. Got it? Once you do the sync offset right here, hit close and then hit start recording down here in the corner and do test recordings and look at it and actually look at the actual video, play it back and make sure that your lips are perfectly matching the video as you're doing this content. If they are not matching up perfectly, go adjust the sync offset and get it just right. Got it? Awesome. Whenever you're looking to fire up that stream, there's a start streaming button over here, but you will have to, like I mentioned earlier, go through the custom connection process to connect to the streaming platform of your choice. That's how you stream with the Avermedia PW513. That's how you set this thing up from scratch, get it synced up, have a good microphone and the whole nine. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're looking for more amazing tech tips, follow me on Amazon. You know where to click to do it. I've got original image content, video content, idea lists, and you can come ask me any question on live streams. I'm live streaming on Amazon, tech live streams every single day. Come ask me any questions about this webcam and any other gear you're using as a content creator. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.